Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and today we're going to cover every item in Dota Underlords. We'll go through each tier of items and discuss their value and usage, as well as which units to equip them to. Here's a quick overview of my ranking, a link to this image in the description below. Within each tier, items are ranked from left to right, and in general, the higher the tier, the better the item. Although, some of the worst items in each tier are worse than the best items of the lower tier. Some of this video will be a recap for my previous item tier list. In that video, I also covered the concepts of effective health as it relates to armor values, and the relative benefit of attack damage versus attack speed. You don't need to know all the details to understand the item rankings and usage, but if you are curious, check out that video, link in the description below. Let's start with tier 1. These items are pretty simple, mostly just combat stats, and are useful for any build in any situation. Chainmail is definitely the best tier 1 item, although after its recent nerf to 7 armor, it is somewhat closer with Embarrassment of Riches and Gloves of Haste. The damage reduction is still quite strong though, it's about a 25% damage reduction against physical damage compared to about 32% before. Since it is a percentage, it scales well into the mid and late game, making it a very strong option. You put, can put it on a frontliner, preferably the one with the most health, and they will be very hard to take down. Embarrassment of Riches. This item is great on turns 1 or 2, so that you gain the most options for items. More options means a better average quality. There are some relatively lackluster items in the game, and some really, really high quality ones, so getting that extra option helps to ensure that you find the best items throughout the game. Gloves of Haste. Attack speed is really powerful at all points in the game, but especially later on. So in the early game, you can put it on any upgraded unit who will likely have the highest attack value, which will not only increase their damage, but also give them faster mana gain, since that is typically limited by attack speed. It also helps units with uh, passives, such as Slark or Troll Warlord, to stack those up faster, and then faster attacks means faster stacks, and that leads to even more stacks. It's a nice little cycle there. Hood of Defiance. It's great for keeping a key unit alive against burst magic damage, but that's not normally relevant until later on in the game. And this means that your unit cannot hold another item, so you can't really protect a big carry who wants another item by using the Hood. The 10 HP regen isn't nothing, but it's not that much either. It puts it squarely in the middle of this tier. It's an okay pickup over some of the bottom rung items, but not quite as impactful at all stages like the ones above it. Blightstone. Negative armor effects like Blightstone and Heartless will increase your physical damage dealt, but it's relatively modest at about a 17% increase against most targets who have 5 base armor. And this affects all damage dealt to the target though, not just from the holder of the Blightstone so it's good to focus down individual targets quickly. It is an on-hit effect, so Medusa's split shot will apply it to all opponents hit. Other than that, it's just good on any type of backliner who isn't holding another item. Claymore. This one is pretty straightforward, plus 30 damage on all your attacks. And this makes it ideal for a unit with high attack speed, because the more attacks means more usages of that 30 damage. Since it's a flat damage bonus, and units do generally do not increase in attack speed as they level up, this is much more powerful in the early game, where 30 damage represents a greater portion of your overall damage output. Vitality Booster. 500 health is solid, but it's nothing special. Best on units with other damage mitigation, like knights or warriors, to give them more than 500 effective health. It's rated so low because Chainmail is almost always better for any unit above 1 star against physical damage, and Hood of Defiance is better against magic damage. Brooch of the Martyr. This is not a great item, mainly because there are not that many debuffs that warrant a reduction. Sure, it can reduce the duration of stuns or silences, but those are still relatively short, and this does not gain a lot of value. There is some logic that I've heard to put it on your own demons, such as Chaos Knight or Queen of Pain, if you have multiple demons to reduce the self-silence from the demon buff. So maybe that can work, although I've not really seen that too much in practice. The mana gain is not totally irrelevant, but if it but it has to go on a unit who is already taking damage, and the mana gain from taking damage is so fast anyway that I don't really think the mana gain puts it enough to value it above other options in this tier. And finally we've got Tranquil Boots. Now the move speed is not really that important, although it is kind of noticeable on melee heroes. The 25 health regen is pretty strong in the early game I suppose, but not so much in the mid and late game. And with the recent doubling of health totals, fights do drag out longer, but it's still a struggle for this to compete with the flat health bonus from an item like Vitality Booster, and that's not a very high bar to clear. These boots are definitely the worst of the tier 1 items. Moving on to tier 2, for the most part these items are a bit more situational, with a few of them giving raw combat stats. 
and that makes some of them weaker than the best tier 1 items, and often I'll pick a Chainmail, Embarrassment of Riches, or Gloves of Haste over some of the lower items on this list. To start, we've got Smuggler. Just like Embarrassment of Riches, this item is amazing early on, getting you higher tier items quicker, giving you lots of power over your opponents. I'm always going to be taking Smuggler on round 2 or 3, and most of the time on round 10 and even 15, unless I need a very specific item uh, from that tier. Helm of the Undyne. Now this is a top-notch item, giving survivability in the form of armor, but also an extra 4 seconds to deal damage or to cast after death. Now this is great on any type of frontliner, especially ones with low cooldowns like Tusk or Slarder or even Beastmaster, so they can get an extra cast off when they die. It's also great on high impact casting units like Enigma or Disruptor to ensure that even if they get CC'd or burst down, they will still get to cast during that undying state. Blade Mail. Blade Mail is actually an offensive item despite it being classified as defensive. It will not reduce your damage taken in any way, only dealing damage based on the damage that you take. It deals more if you have more health, meaning that you can take more damage, or if you have healing to gain some life back. And also it calculates the damage reflected before mitigation, like armor, so it makes it especially useful on things like warriors and knights. Aegis of the Immortal, and I love Aegis of the Immortal, games are often very close, and with the extra reroll from losing, which means that people, even in the lowest placement, are going to have a strong build and a strong catch-up mechanic. Oftentimes, multiple people are going to be eliminated on the same round or within round, one round of each other, meaning that an extra turn can easily make the difference between a top 4 or bottom 4 finish. Not to mention the fact that you can play greedy knowing that you have an extra turn to spend all of your gold if you do lose a round and lose the Aegis. But it does mean that you're not taking a combat item, which could help you to win extra rounds over the course of the game or take less damage when you do lose. Sometimes I might take a combat item, focused uh, tier 1 item, over this. Uh, if I already have a few other global items like Embarrassment of Riches or Smuggler because you don't want to have too few combat items because then you're just going to be very weak compared to people who do. Next up, Big Time Contract. Now, the Big Time Contract has some use outside of the dedicated Bloodbound build. It gives health on par with Vitality Booster even if you do not use the Bloodbound part, making the floor a bit higher than some of the other items in this tier. That being said, the ceiling is also pretty high. This item can get much better in multiples, meaning that you don't need to play any real Bloodbound units to get the Bloodbound Alliance. The best usage is on high damage carries, like Phantom Assassin, Arc Warden, Dragon Knight, Terror Blade, etc. But the Bloodbound bonus has been nerfed several times, so it's not really as great as it used to be. Plus, those big carry units often want another more impactful item anyway. Blink Dagger. Now, Blink Dagger needs to go on a unit who's not afraid to instantly jump in and then get a single cast off. The prime candidates are things like Tidehunter, Lone Druid, Disruptor. I'm not a big fan of this item since it does put the unit into a bad position where they can easily be burst down by the opponent. So only use it on units who you are okay with losing them after their first cast. You don't really want to put them on a unit who's going to have any kind of sustained damage output. Celebratory Murder Gong. Easily the best named item in the game. The Celebratory Murder Gong is a mixed bag in terms of actual in-game usefulness though. Gaining bonus hype is not that relevant until you unlock your ultimate on round 20, but then it becomes very strong, getting that cast out much quicker. You're probably only going to pick this up on round 3 or round 10, which means it's not going to be very useful for a little while. And it still needs to go into a unit that gets a lot of kills, so ideally one that deals big chunks of damage at once, somebody like Sniper or Shadow Demon. If one of your other units steals a kill, then this item can be useless, so I kind of rate it uh, middle, of the back, middle of the pack here. Next up, we've got Brooch of the Aggressor. While most items in this tier are kind of situational, Brooch of the Aggressor is generally pretty useful. It's great on a unit who wants to cast multiple spells, meaning that they have low cooldowns and are safe in the back line. Somebody like Puck is a particularly good example, same with Necrophos, uh, but it can also be used on somebody who wants to cast quickly like uh, Kunkka or Disruptor if they you don't have one of these more preferred units. Arcane Boots, similar to Brooch, casting more spells quickly is often a recipe for success, and since the radius on Arcane Boots was increased uh, up to two cells away, it used to just be one cell away, it does, uh, it does have a little bit higher impact, but fights do just drag on for a long time, and getting one extra cast once per battle, it's not the most impactful thing. 
It's especially useful though on units who have less than 100 max mana so that they hit that 50% threshold a little bit quicker. Some notable units with less than 100 mana are Bat Rider, who only has 20, Lone Druid and Puck who have 60, and Morphling with 75 mana. Force Staff. Now Force Staff is not the best item since its combat impact is weird. Ideally it goes on a backliner to maybe protect them from an assassin jumping on them, but if your opponent doesn't have an assassin or has a ranged assassin, then this item basically does nothing. It can also go on a frontliner when you try to line them up against the key opposing unit to keep them out of the fight. I don't think this is a really great item though in general, but it has some uses. Barricade, probably the worst contraption currently in the game. Two barricades just don't control enough space to really justify an item slot most of the time. It can be useful if you have a mostly ranged composition, letting you funnel opposing melee units in, in and then forcing them to walk around the long paths to get to you. But even then, there's often better items to pick, especially within this tier. All right, moving on to tier three, and tier three is where we really start to see some powerful impact items. And these are often very strong offensive items in this tier, as well as some good utility as well. Mask of Madness. Now this is an insanely strong item when paired with the right unit. It offers a lot of attack speed and lifesteal, and the drawback is that it silences the unit. Luckily, silencing only prevents casting spells, but does not stop passive effects. So the ideal user of this item are ones with passive effects, so there's really no drawback. It's really insane on Slark and Troll Warlord in particular, since the extra attack speed helps them to stack their passives faster, but it's also pretty good on things like Phantom Assassin, Luna, Anti-Mage, and Drow Ranger, who just have passive attack abilities as well. This item is so much better than any other item on the units who want it, so despite it being a little bit narrow, it really rises to the top of this tier. Maelstrom. You can think of Maelstrom kind of as an attack damage item that basically adds 100 damage per hit. That's the best case scenario, of course, uh, since the Chain Lightning doesn't always have that many targets, but it's a pretty good approximation. And actually, it's even better than that, since the damage is not reduced by armor, because it is magic damage, so it's really effective against things like Warriors in particular. Like all attack damage items, it is best on a unit with high attack speed, especially Hunters. It also goes well on Arc Warden, since the clone can proc the Lightning as well, despite having lower attack damage. Bracers of Desperation. Now, Bracers is basically Refresher Orb plus a slight increase on your magic damage output. And that's pretty insane because Refresher Orb is a very strong tier 4 item, and Bracers is down in tier 3. It goes on all of the same units, and anything with a strong ability that would benefit from another cast. With the increased health pools after the big update, this does not go off quite as quickly as it did before, so ideally it goes on a frontliner or somebody else who's taking damage. Skullbasher. This is functionally plus 50 attack damage with the chance to stun on top, and that makes it quite powerful, able to interrupt casting or lower the opponent's damage output for that 1.5 seconds. This goes really well on assassins in particular, since the stun is a sort of defensive ability, and assassins get themselves into some dangerous spots, so a little bit of defense is useful. Octarine Essence. This is kind of a niche item. It's good on units with intermediate level cooldowns like between 7 or 15 seconds because then with the reduction they'll likely have time to gain the mana back and still be able to cast again. If the cooldown is too much shorter than that they likely won't have uh, the ability to gain mana fast enough and if it's too much longer then they probably won't survive long enough to get a second cast off anyway. But with the increased health pools from the big update some units with the 20 plus second cooldown can still gain some benefit from this if they are tanky enough. It's especially good on Bristleback though, who has low enough mana to consistently cast this very quickly. Next up, Sacred Relic. Nothing fancy on this one, just a big chunk of attack damage. Deals a bit more damage than Skullbasher, but not too much more, and the stun from Skullbasher is pretty useful, meaning that Sacred Relic is just a bit below it in terms of priority. It goes well on anybody with high attack speed, and it's also strong on Luna, where the bonus damage is amplified by every bounce that will deal more damage. Next up, we've got Target Buddy. This contraption is incredibly tanky and can be pretty impactful early on in the game. It's great at picking up assassins in the back line or holding their frontliners in place, taunting them while you get your first spells off. Now, this was previously one of the best tier 2 items, but then it got nerfed up to tier 3. So it compares very favorably to every tier 2 item, but it's kind of middle of the pack compared to other impactful tier 3 items. Vanguard. I'm not a big fan of the defensive items in this tier, mainly because I often pick Chainmail very highly in tier 1, meaning that I have already have a few defensive items already, and I'm looking for offensive items in the tier instead. 
This is an okay single target defensive item, effectively blocking 35 damage per hit from any source. It's best when you have relatively few frontliners, like in assassin builds, which will often just have one or two units up front. Against pure physical damage, this is actually weaker than chainmail if you're going to be taking over about 100 damage per attack, which is fairly common against 3 star units or assassins. The bonus health total is on par with vitality booster, and that's a nice little bonus as well. Mechanism. This is kind of strong in the early to mid game where 500 heal to your entire team or everybody right around it is pretty sizable. It does fall off in the late game though where life totals are much higher and 500 just isn't all that much anymore. It can also be tricky to decide who to put this on. If you put it on a unit who gets burst down too quickly, then they'll trigger the heal before anyone else is really damaged. But if you put it on your most tanky unit, like a Pudge, then it won't trigger until some of your units have already died. So it can be a little tough to find that middle ground. So putting it on somebody with relatively low health units that's going to be in the middle of the front line is probably the best bet. That means they won't be making they won't be taking too much initial aggro, but they'll still be low enough health total to trigger it at a good timing. Assassin's Veil. This item is great in some situations, where you can consistently burn the hype and make their Underlord very weak, but it can also be actively bad in others. This item always makes your unit try to attack their Underlord, but if they're out of range, they'll just mindlessly walk in to get into range instead of, you know, attacking the thing that's right next to them that's possibly on really low health. So ideally this goes on a ranged unit, especially Sniper or Gyrocopter who have infinite range, or on Assassins who can jump to their Underlords right away. Poaching Knife. This item can be really strong if you get it early and are winning rounds by a lot. It can be triggered on summoned units as well, so hopefully you get to play against a lot of uh, like primordials or other things that make summons. Ideally it goes on somebody with a big AoE effects to pick up lots of kills, like Beastmaster, but it also goes really well on Sniper, who has high single target damage, meaning that he can rack up quite a number of kills by himself, similar to the celebratory Murder Gong. Later in the game though, it definitely loses some of its effectiveness, as the relative value of getting that 1 or 2 extra gold is a little bit less impactful. Healing Ward. This contraption, I think, got a really bad rap when it first came out, because frankly, it was absolutely horrible. But in the big update, the healing was doubled up to 40 health per second, which is actually a, a decent sized buff, even though health totals have doubled, since this is a healing rate, meaning that it's compared against opposing damage output rather than health total. So this became twice as effective as before. That being said, it's really difficult to get the full value out of this in a lot of cases. It has a very small radius, and your units will very often move out of it right, right at the start of the fight, especially if you have a lot of melee units. I will pick this higher than Poaching Knife later in the game, or against or over Assassin's Veil if I don't have a good unit to put the Veil on, but in general, I try to still avoid Healing Ward. Dawning of Restool. This item is extremely niche, but it is pretty good at what it does. If your build does not have any healing, like say you're an assassin build or a mage build, and you're not running a Nessex as your underlord, then this item can be really good for you. It will dramatically help against opposing a Nessex build who has a lot of healing, as well as against builds like Warlocks or Scrappies. Still, due to those restrictions, this is probably the least picked item in this tier. Tier 4. Now these are some of the best combat items in the game. The offensive items here are the best for raw damage output, and there's some pow powerful magic damage resist options as well. The best of the ones here we got Moon Shard, tons of attack speed, and by now you can probably tell that I just love attack speed. Deals more damage that, uh, you know, it deals more damage the later on the game goes and the higher your base attack damage goes. Makes you stack faster on things like Slark or Troll Warlord, who are two of the best units for this item. Although Mask of Madness is often better on them because it has, although has slightly less attack speed, the lifesteal for survivability is even better. Moon Shard is better on anyone who has an active ability they want to cast, somebody like Dragon Knight or possibly Medusa, for instance. Daedalus, just like Moon Shard here, it is a very good attack damage item. It's not so great on assassins since the crit chances can overlap, meaning that they gain slightly less value from it. Otherwise, you throw this on any type of carry unit and their damage is going to skyrocket. Things like Luna, Medusa, or Arc Warden will just absolutely love to pick up a Daedalus. Refresher Orb. Refresher Orb is great. You just copy and paste everything I said about the Bracers of Desperation before. It is slightly different, not requiring that 30% health threshold, but also not giving full mana back either. And this makes it better on backliners like uh, Medusa or Lich or Enigma, but or on high health units like Kunkka or Lone Druid who don't drop to 30% very quickly. 
The cooldown reduction to adjacent units is cool, but it's not terribly impactful. Hopefully the unit with this item is casting as soon as possible before anyone else on your team. I have Scotty. Now this item is pretty much tailor-made for Medusa, whose split shot will apply the debuff to all enemies hit. It is classified as an offensive item, but really there's nothing that offensive about it. It is uh, really a defensive item granting bonus health and uh, slows to the enemies. Other than Medusa, put this on a safe backliner to make sure that the debuff keeps on coming throughout the fight, or you can put it on Assassin, who's going to be who could use a bit more survivability for from the extra health when they jump in, as well as to reduce their target's ability to fight them back. It's also especially good on Deadeye or Brute units, who will often swap targets to ensure that the debuff is spread around. Tombstone, this contraption has been through a lot from being very overpowered on release to unplayable, and then now I think it's found a good balance somewhere in the middle. It's kind of like Target Buddy in most cases, it's generally used for tanking and distracting the enemy rather than actually dealing damage. It is fairly tanky on its own right, and also the zombies that spawn have lots of health total as well. So it can be placed up near the front or used around your backliners to protect them against assassins. It's not really the highest pick though, but if you do need more defense, it's an okay option. Battle Fury. This item rarely outperforms Daedalus in terms of just raw attack damage output, even if the enemies are kind of stacked up. It still has lots of attack damage on it, so it's a good choice if you can't, even if you can't make use of the cleave on the fight, but generally Moonshard and Daedalus are the higher priority picks over, Daedal over Battle Fury here. Ideally, it's used on higher attack speed units who will have, who will be on the edges of the fight rather than front and center who might get burst down a little bit too quickly. Pipe of Insight. This item is very strong against opposing magic damage, especially against the burst from something like Morphling or Keeper of the Light. Ideally, this goes on someone closer to the middle of your formation who is ranged, so they won't move around randomly too much. You also want to position your units on the same side as the enemy to minimize the movement at the start of the fight, otherwise your units will move away and won't get the shield. Black King Bar. Pipe of Insight is great at reducing some magic damage on several units, but if you want to save just a single unit from all magic damage, BKB is a great choice. I like it mostly on high damage units who can carry and clean up a fight on their own, someone like Beastmaster, Doom, or Lycan. That being said, both Pipe of Insight and BKB are kind of situational here, best used when an opponent has lots of magic damage, whereas the other items above it in this tier are almost always useful regardless of builds, regardless of enemies. And with how long the fights are going on now after the big update, the 7 second immunity from BKB is just not nearly as impactful as, as it used to be when fights were much more short, shorter and burst damage heavy. Friends and Family Discount. Now this is only really useful if you get it early on round 20 via the Smuggler item. Any later than that, and you're really not looking to buy that too many more units over the course of the game. It essentially only saves you one gold per unit that you're going to use in your lineup, and unless you're doing a completely transformational build or going for a lot of 3-star units, that number is typically going to only be like 5 or 10 from the point that you get this item, which is definitely not worth missing out on the higher impact items in this tier, or even some of the better items in tier 3. Scythe the Vise. I don't really like Scythe the Vise. It can be okay in the really late game, possibly to disable a key opposing unit long enough for you to cast some CC spells, but it's inconsistent relying on positioning and somewhat random like swing timers in who attacks first if two people are trying to attack the same target. Sometimes the melee unit in front gets the first hit and is transformed, and sometimes it's a ranged unit behind it. Not to mention, if your opponent can scout out your Scythe of Eyes positioning, they can try to adjust, making it just really inconsistent for not that huge of a payoff. Because 4 seconds is very short, and it's not really enough time to burst down units quickly now that health totals are doubled after the big update. Dagon, the bottom of tier 4. Dagon is just terrible. The damage used to be enough to kill most enemies who dropped into its range, potentially denying them their ability to cast. But with the increased health on every unit, Dagon did not adjust, and thus it falls extremely far behind. If you do end up picking up Dagon for some reason, ideally it will go on Arc Warden, because other than Arc Warden, or because Arc Warden makes two copies and you can use it twice, but there's better items for Arc Warden and other than him, you can just really put it on anybody else because it offers no real combat stats. Alright, on to tier 5, the best of the best. With the increase of odds of these items, they're much more frequently showing up in games than they were before the big update, as early as round 30 with the smuggler item. And they have a very big impact and very, uh, very strong effects, and can often swing fights all on their own. 
The best one here is Bloodthorn. Now this item is amazing against most late game compositions. Most opponents will have a unit with a big CC ability that they really want to cast quickly, something like a Tidehunter or a Kanka. But this shuts that down very easily. And it can be played around slightly if you put up a sacrificial unit up front to get maximum mana first, then bait the first Bloodthorn uh, proc. But even in that case, the item is doing its job in delaying the opposing abilities. You can put it on Arc Warden to duplicate its effect, or on a carry like Templar Assassin, who will survive long into the fights with her diffraction. It also has a ton of attack damage on it, so you can put it on anyone who deals lots of auto attack damage like a Windranger or somebody with fast attack speed. Assault Cuirass. This item is amazing in stacked formations, especially knights and warriors. If the unit with this buff can get into the middle of the fight and stay alive, it's so incredibly power and powerful in long fights. And with how, how long the fights are going with the doubled health total from the big update, this item gets so much value, consistently keeping your units alive and absolutely shredding opponent's armor. This is absolutely just a great tier 5 item as well as Bloodthorn. After that we've got Desperate Measures, and this item is pretty strong in basically every lineup. Gaining more attack damage is great for things like Knights, Warriors, or Hunters, while gaining more mana is awesome for the more caster heavy lineups. Clearly this is better when you're much lower on life total, but even if you're relatively high for late game, say like 40%, you can still gain plus 12%, which is on par with, you know, some of the other increases, uh, some of the other item increases earlier on. 12% 12 increase is nothing to scoff at. Next up, we've got Divine Rapier, an all-or-nothing type item. It's ridiculously strong, but it's also a bit of a liability. If you do lose with it, you will probably lose the game, since you're probably not going to beat somebody who you just lost to when you lose your best item and they gain your best item. But if you are already low on life, then one loss is probably going to knock you out anyway, so you should probably pick this and just go all in. But if you're very healthy, this is probably an unnecessary risk that you want to avoid. Like all attack damage items, it's best on high attack speed units, or other units like Luna or Dragon Knight who have some type of attack damage scaling effect. Next up we've got Expanded Roster, and now in theory this seems so incredibly good, maybe like the best item, add an extra unit for extra synergies, more damage, more CC, but in practice it can be a little bit situational. Most of the time you're not prepared to have another unit ready to go in. Your build is going to be mostly completed and you're just rerolling for a few upgrades, if you plan your build correctly, you should rarely be one away from another big alliance, so it's kind of hard to make this extremely useful. Still, if you get to add more big hitters like another Dragon Knight or Disruptor or Tide Hunter or something like that, um, and if you already have an extra one ready or in the shop this turn, then that's great. But it doesn't often happen, and because you don't obviously know, you obviously don't know that you're going to get this, and you can't prepare. Heart of Tarrasque. Now, Heart of Tarrasque is a pretty fun item. Slap it on a high damage carry and they basically become unkillable. And I love just seeing this on a unit like Beastmaster or Bristleback or any of the brawnies who've stacked up a bunch of bonus health. But also somebody on like Lycan or Doom who don't need too much of an item, who don't need too many items to deal a lot of damage. And it has high base health to increase through regeneration. But without one of those units, it holds a little bit less impact than some of the other items in this tier. Shiva's Guard is a little bit lackluster. The effect is pretty impactful, but it can be played around. It's a once per fight, and so a smart opponent will move their formation back and let just leave one unit up front. And that means that this will trigger onto just that one unit, since uh, you might not be able to hit all of them um, right at the start. It does have a little bit of value against the opposing assassins, though, since they're going to jump in, and then maybe you can hit most of the assassins right after they land. Radiance. Similar to Assault Cuirass, you can put this on a tanky unit in the middle of the fight and it'll deal massive damage. But in contrast to the 15 armor shred from Assault Cuirass, that'll do a whole lot more damage than the mere 60 damage burn per second here from the Radiance. So it's even worse than some of the higher quality tier 4 items like Moonshard or Daedalus. A higher class of criminal, and we saved the worst for last. A uh, higher class of criminal here it used to be one of the best items in the game when it was tier 3, but now that it's tier 5, it's just complete trash. It's an item that increases your chance of getting more tier 4 and 5 units, but it comes so late in the game that you don't really need too much more help in that department. You know, maybe if you're really trying to find that upgrade to that, uh, to that one tier 5 unit and your other options from the pack are just like bad tier 4 units or tier 4 items, you know, maybe you can pick it, but even then... I'm just going to try to avoid this item as much as possible. So, 
that was a whole lot. I hope this helped you to get a little bit better understanding of what items pick uh, when, as well as the ideal types of units for each one. Remember that in a lot of cases, the item you should pick is very contextual. There's a lot of, it's good if you're running this build and it's bad if you're running this type of unit. I hope you enjoyed this and be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. You can also consider supporting me on Patreon if you like this content and want to see more like it. It really helps me there as well. Also, check me out on Twitch where I stream almost daily. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time.